so we're going to use the edge finder now and we're going to find the X reference point first. So we adjust our speed there to our edge finder just about 800 RPM. And now we're rotating in between the two just as it comes in start touching off the part. And you keep driving in nice and slowly to the point now where it just sort of flicks off. There we go. And you zero your X. So that means we're trimming the moves from the center. So we're going to move the tool up and align the center of the tool by moving in the three millimeters in over the edge of the part. So move in your three millimeters. That's your three. So now we've found you've aligned the center of the machine over the edge of, over the, edge of the part to pull that zero. So that's the part, that's the X done. And you repeat that process for the Y. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the inside jaws of the device as our reference point. So we drop down into the pocket in between the jaws of the device and you bring the tool over to touch off the jaws of the device internally. Machining in to the point where it flicks off. There we go. Zero the Y. And now moving up. Up with the coil lock. Move the tool, the raise tool up. And now move the tool so it aligns the center of the tool, which is the center of the machine, over the edge of the vise, the same as the side of the part. So you're moving that in three millimeters again. In three to align them up. And that's your three millimeters in. Zero that, make sure to zero. So now you've got the X is done, Y is done. So that's that edge finder now finished. Next process is to we're going to change out the edge finder, we no longer need that. And we're going to change out, put in a spot drill to make sure everything's right. So we'll move the edge finder out. And the next two you're going to need is a spot drill. So pop the spot drill into the holder, so wind down the jaws of the vise. And then open slowly, slightly to put in your spot drill. We need to lower the apologies there for a second. Just gonna tighten that up. So we're gonna lower the bed of the vise. So I'm winding down the bed now. Let's pull out the height in the spot for them. So the movement the coordinate position according to our drone it's as you remember from before x is in 18x so the position is 8 in 18 in the x direction and in the y coordinates it's 40 divided by 2 which is 20 which is the distance between the jaws of the vise same as touching the outside part so the location for the hole is in x 18 y 20 so adjust your dro to y 20 20 and then x18 so as you can see as we as the edge finders lines up the edge of the part it reads zero on the dro just as you see to verify it is done correctly and you're moving in there x18 in position all you do there is now is just to verify that you have done the edge finder correctly so this will want you to drop down make a small pinpoint mark and rotate it round just what you're going to do then is you're going to verify and check which are wearing your calipers that that is in 18. That's perfectly matching up to what it should be. So it's proceeding 18 on the verniers, and that's correct to the drone that we're seeing the 18. And we're verifying we've done the X and the Y correctly. So now you can remove out the two completely, the chuck. And the next two you're going to pop in there is going to be so the quill goes up and locked. Pop down the two. That noise you hear when it's not fully up and down. So pause. One. Making sure the quill is fully up, locked, and then press the slack button to remove the two. So that's now you're done with the chuck. And your next two you want to pop in there is going to be a 16 slot drill. So that's your 16 slot drill, two cutting teeth, and it's saying diameter 16. And then use the correct size collet to fit that. So the collar from the 20 you use, you place that out and pop your 16 in. So then you're popping the tool in position, pushing up, white button for you and it's fully up. Now we're going to raise the bed of the machine up. 
Close and lock. And raise you up the bed. And drill the hole. So you're winding the bed up. Now, you're going to position in into the coordinates x18, y20. x18, y20. And then you're bringing the two up closer again. And drop it down to the touch of the top of the part, hit zero. Then check your, your lock, see where you're at. We're currently at 15. So at this point here, the two is touching the part. We can see the quill is at position at 15 millimeters. And you want to raise down that now to give a depth of 15 millimeters more, so down as far as 30. So there's 30. So we're setting the depth gauge down to give 30, 50, down 50 millimeters, which means we're going to drill a hole from the top surface here down 50 millimeters. So that's our depth stage set. Powering on the machine and adjust the speed when the machine is on. So now you're 60 drillbits, increase your speed up accordingly, according to the formula. Around 2000 RPM, open your quill, and then the best thing to do here is when drilling, it's always good to, to apply on locks here in the X, two locks in the X, and here in the Y. But we don't want that to move when we're drilling, we're only moving in the Z coordinates. So you're applying your locks on the tables, holding it secure, and then you're just going to drill down. So this handle can come out and move around to suit, suit your, your, own, your own stature and height. So as you adjust it to suit you, and you're just drilling down in, in, in hex of 5. And then you won't go past it, you set your lock, and it can only go down as far as the stop there. And that's as far as it goes, down 15. Perfect. Stop the machine, and now you've completed the first stage. We're going to remove the... now. Once you've the hole drilled, it's now okay to remove the part. Only remove the part when the hole is drilled. Remove the part, and now what we want to do is we want to cut the slots in the side. So we're going to cut the two slots in the side, and there for their brackets to line up on. So we're going to cut these two slots out now on the side of the part. And those slots, the distance in of them are drawn. As you can see, the the 10 millimeter wide slot, made with a slot drill. There's a drilled hole in here, 4.2. This is the hole is 10 millimeters, and the depth down of that hole, you can see over here from the drawing, is in 10 from the flat surface, and the depth of the slot itself is 4 millimeters. So to look at that in reality, what it looks like is, it means that the distance from here to the end is 20 millimeters. It's a 12 millimeter wide slot, and that's created using a 12 millimeter slot drill. This tool here is for cutting, the, for cutting that slot out. And the depth from the top down to the base of that, depth of that slot there, it's four millimeters in, in depth. And we're going to use a knee dial here to adjust to that. So what's important here is to ensure that you make the slots on the correct side, so it's the opposite end to the hole that, where the valve is going in. Do not put it up this end, it's on the opposite end here and here. That's why we marked it out clearly. So please mark it out to ensure you drill them on the right side. So to position that, you're going to sit it into the parallel and the flat face surface is facing on the opposite side to you. Or, so as you, as you machine in, you're closing up the vise and now you're going to get ready to drill. We have to use the edge finder to get, to get our coordinate positions. It's also good practice if you like. Just use a parallel to keep you in level with the edge of the, edge of the jaws of the vise. And what we're going to do is we're going to move out this 16 slot drill that we just currently used. I'll pop back in. Open our locks. And I'll change out that 16 slot drill for the, temp, for the, for the edge finder. Move it clear, up, back down. So our edge finder, pop it into Ori Collet, picking off center, pop it into the and then lock into position. Moving over now, what we're going to do here is we're going to get the in position. We're going to find the X, we're going to touch the edge finder off this surface here. And then 
That'll get our X position aligned, we can find the centre of the edge finder, the centre of the machine, and then find touch the edge off the jaw device, which is the same as touching the opposite edge of the part here. So, do that, point over, power on the machine, adjust your speed down to 800 RPM using the edge finder. Make sure you're clear of the part, drop down, and what you're going to do here is you're going to do the edge finder in so that it just has to touch off the part to the point where it flicks off. There, zero your X, up, then move in to align the centre of the tool, the centre of the machine. That's in three millimeters. Zero, and now we're going to go out and find the Y. So go from this side. If you, look, if you look at the drone, it tells you that the, that the center of the, of the part is taken from the side, so it's 15 in from that side. So keep the same reference to the side, that your machine up the top, so it's 15 in from the, from the side of the flat surface on it, which is currently over here. So dropping down, and I'm winding in now again in the Y direction, Y axis, till it touches the point where it flicks off, there. Zero your Y, up, wind in again, three, centre the tool, which is over the edge of the part. Zero your Y, done. Now that edge finder is done, we're going to replace out with trial wheel stocker. Place it out, 12 mil slot dill in the RA collet, and you pop it in position. So the noise, clear from that, the tool must be fully up and locked, and you push the collet up into the spindle. Now, this can happen. So I have to replace out that Ori collet because sometimes the thread can get damaged in those. I've got a new collet to solve that issue there. So as you press up, it should feed up into the machine and the white button start up. In position, now what we're going to do is we have to find the top of that tool, the bottom of that tool, the top of the cutter, off the top of the surface. I'm going to remove 4 mil down in depth. And we're dropping the tool down just above the top of it, just shy of it. It can still, it's not fully touching. So I'm um, now the power on the machine. Open our quill. This is our knee dial. And we're raising up the tool just to the top surface, till it, just to the cuts. Just to the point there. Now we're going to zero that position. And we're going to move into coordinate position, which is in Y15 to the center. So Y is going to be in 15 millimeters. And the X back out to the end. So we're in position, now we're going to adjust and we're going to make this cut 4 millimeters. So we've zeroed the knee dial, I'm also going to zero the Z axis. And we're going to bring up the bed of the machine 4 millimeters, so one full turn is 2.5. And, and then adding on to that again another 1.5 millimeters, giving us 4 millimeter depth. Exactly 4. And now you're machining in, and because we've zeroed, we found the zero point of the center of the tool, it means the radius of the tool is the diameter is 12, so it's a 6 radius. So when this reads 14 in the X, it's cutting 6 mil ahead, so that gives us our finished length of 20. But the slot is in 20 total, but when the center of the tool is at 14, 
the raised and cutter will give us that perfect R of 12. We're machining in there now, do this manually. Don't use the automatic feed for this procedure, just manually machining it in. Now, in all the good practices, because we're only moving in the x-axis, I'm going to lock the y-axis. That's the lock behind here at the back. We're machining in then. Nice and steady, and we're watching that DRO in front to line up. He was 14. And you're machining along there, and just watching that X. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen. Perfect. I'm back out. So that's the slot done. The stop machine. So now we've made the, the perfect slot. Diameter 12. The next thing to do now is while it's in position, we're going to drill that hole for the M5. We're going to drill the 4.2. So we're going to change out the tool, pop back in the chuck. So we need to take out and pop in our chuck. rotating around so it gets in and the white button control. So to wind down the bed again and the knee so we're just down the knee dial to wind down position. And the location now for this hole is in 10 millimeters from the edge. So winding in so from as the edge finder is just at the edge now, you'll see that it's reading zero there in your dial. And then the, the, the tip of the edge finder is right over the edge of the part, so it's in 10 from that location to the center of the hole. So in 10 millimeters to the center. And that is bang on. Bang on the 10. So, power on the machine. We want to drill this hole to a depth of 10 millimeters. Just going to spot the location first. So it's going to open and make a small little pilot hole. That's it, the pilot hole from the 4mm drill bit. I'm going to stop the chuck, change out the spot drill, and pop in a 4.2 drill bit. So try not to move out of position when you're in like that. Just open the chuck jaws and then wind down the jaws. To ensure and then slightly open them to fit the 4.2 drill bit in. If you can fit that in without moving, it's better so you don't lose your coordinates. So the distance, the depth now we're going to drill from this drill bit down is down 10 millimeters. So again we're going to use the quill and we're checking the quill. We're at zero so we're adjusting up the dial to 10. And we're up 10 millimeters from there. So we're coming down to a depth of 10 millimeters from the top. Powering on the lathe, the mill machine, just your speed for the 4.2 drill bit, accordingly to the speed. And 3,300. Open the, around 2,500 RPM, and you're drilling down to the point of the stop. Perfect. Up on the chuck. Now be careful of the swarf, just use a little brush remove off the swarf from the drill bit. Don't use your hands in case you get to avoid getting cut. So that's the hole drilled safely and we're just going to move away that can now that's the, that stage done and the final thing now is to tap that. So you can do that tapping if you like here if you have time or out on the bench. Just to, for the purpose of this video I'm going to show you that the bracket is going to fit into that little part. So here's a bracket we already have just to show you it actually in operation. Awesome. So the final thing we want to do now is we want to tread, tap this internal hole, we drill the 4.2 for an M5 tap, get your tap set from the store and then we're going to put some coolant in there. You can tap it set on the mill machine or out on the bench and what we're going to do is use, you consult your notes for the first tap, start and tap, the float tap and then into the bottoming tap. So the starter tap in position, less treads to the bottom, 
position it. Apologies there now. Just ensure that's tightened up in the handle. And then position over the edge of the hole and you're twisting down making sure that it's perpendicular, the top is perpendicular into the hole as you start the treading process. So as you're treading forward, one full turn forward and a quarter turn back to rate that. Move the swarf out of the hole. And you're treading forward, and it's quite easy to do, just ensuring the tap is perpendicular into the hole. And you're treading back out of that. And treading back and back out again. And twisting forward right down to a stage where you can feel as far as you can go till you start coming to the bottom of that of that hole. One full turn forward, a quarter turn back, and we can feel the tap has now reached the bottom of the hole. So that's as far as you're going to go, and reverse back out again to ensure you remove all that swarf out of material. So we'll place out the taps and pop in the final tap, which is the bottoming tap, to ensure you've got threads right to the bottom of the hole to fit. It's quite a short screw, only 10 millimeters in diameter, so we've got 10 millimeters in depth. Put your bottoming tap, your final one, just to ensure that you put treads right to the bottom of that hole. So you can use, if you like, the second and the, and, the, and the third tap. It's very easy to follow. That's right to the bottom, and back out again. And we can see now that that is fully treaded. But the main thing here is, is it not to move the part out until you have the hole drilled. You can avoid that at all purpose. And then that's it's just a test to see before you pick it out. But that's that treaded in, no problem. Perfect. So the part is now complete. And you're going to repeat the process on the opposite side, following the steps, just ensuring that when you turn it around, that you don't, that you cut the slot on the correct side, but you're repeating the exact same steps that we have just, that we just followed there. And then that, in turn, We'll have it looking like this. You've got both sides on the correct side. The depth is four and it's, and it's treaded and tapped. And then we're going to look at the next video is to make the brackets to fit this. And when they're done nicely, it does a perfect snug fit inside and it will nice, neat radius to match. And that's the next video.